Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. This next story is about how a couple opened their marriage and when one of the two spouses had to end their side relationship, they wanted to close it back again. However, the other spouse was not so keen on doing that. This one's from user Throw Array Revolving Mar. My wife, 37 female, and I, 39 male, entered into an open marriage at her request. Now she wants to close it up again. My wife and I have been married for 15 years. We have two children, a 14-year-old girl and a 12-year-old boy. About a year and a half ago, my wife came to me asking for an open marriage. She said she was bored with just us and wanted to experience more. I was very against this, as I am a strong believer that marriage is between two people. At the same time, when we got married, I'd had five intimate partners, and my wife had only been with me. She made it clear that either we opened things up or she was prepared to file for divorce. Neither of us wanted that, so I agreed under certain conditions. Nobody brought back to the house. We don't talk about partners. The kids don't know. Family doesn't know. All partners are tested ahead of time. Nobody that we both know, etc. I had a strong suspicion that my wife had someone in mind, and this was confirmed when 24 hours after we agreed, she went out and didn't return until 4 a.m. It was difficult for me to accept, and I was really not okay with it, but I wanted to save my marriage. Last May, I met Amber. Our daughters are in marching band together. Amber is divorced and has no interest in getting married again. Like everyone else in the world, she does have needs. So five months after opening up the marriage, I began sleeping with Amber. At first, it felt like cheating. But honestly, it's nice to have something with no strings where neither of us wants it to proceed forward. Over time, I became comfortable with the idea that my wife and I would be able to get our needs met both inside and outside of our marriage. It actually made our bed life a lot more passionate and we were much happier. My wife and her guy, who I never met, stopped seeing each other in April amid the lockdown. From what I gather, while he's in an open marriage, his wife is not aware and it was too hard to get away. In May, we helped organize a Zoom concert for the band Kids, which turned out great. Though my wife met Amber for the first time. Well, I guess Amber has been open with a few of the moms because it got back to my wife that Amber was my outside partner. My wife informed me that as we both know Amber, I needed to end things with her. I refused, citing the fact that neither of us knew her ahead of time and them meeting did not violate the rules we established. Throughout the past month, she's numerous times told me that she's uncomfortable with me continuing to sleep with Amber and I need to conclude the arrangement. Note that she was fine for a year where she was with her partner. This weekend, she came to me and stated that she'd like to close our marriage again. I told her I was open to that as long as we agreed that it would remain closed moving forward. She agreed that's what she wants as well, that she doesn't need to have any more partners, that she's happy with just me. I told her that we could agree to close the marriage on two conditions. The first, I laid out above. The second, I wanted her to sign a document waiving spousal support in the event of divorce. She flipped out. She categorically refused to even consider that. My wife is a stay-at-home mom and has not worked since we got married. She said that I could keep seeing Amber and leave her with nothing if she signed that. I told her that I'd be willing to include a list of mutually agreed upon situations, including infidelity on my part where the agreement would be void. She says it's not open for discussion, that she's not going to continue to be cheated on and left with nothing when I decide to leave her for Amber. I pointed out that this whole thing was her idea and that I only went along with it to preserve our marriage. She says that if we don't close the marriage up, then it might as well be over. I told her that I am not going to tolerate being threatened with divorce every time she doesn't get her way. She says I'm being dramatic and I need to focus on us. Should I agree without stipulations? 
I know there's no future with Amber, as we've both agreed it's purely physical and even though I know I'm standing my ground, I feel like I'm blowing up my marriage over a dead end. At the same time, I don't believe it's about Amber at all. Short term update. So based on what some of you have said here, this morning I called Amber up, reminded her that we were supposed to keep things discreet and asked who she shared the details of our liaison with. She denied telling anyone and I didn't get the feeling she was lying. So I pulled up my wife's Google timeline history and discovered that she tracked me to Amber's house in April. She followed me and then deliberately introduced herself to Amber to create a conflict. Here I was thinking she actually wanted to get involved in band parents, but no, she just wanted to try and end things with my outside partner. I don't even know what to do at this point. Wow, OP, your wife sounds like a very complex individual. First, she wants to open up the marriage and threatens divorce if you don't comply. Fine, you comply, you both get some side action and then hers has to end for some reason while yours doesn't. Then she makes it so that you have to end your part or again divorce. So she just keeps threatening divorce to get her way. Of course I understand you wanting to use this waiver of spousal support in the event of divorce so that she stops using it as a weapon and that just makes her go crazy. In my opinion, she sounds like she needs some counseling to kind of understand what's going on in her life and in her head because this all sounds super crazy. What do you guys think OP should do at this point? So while you think about that, let's continue with the update to see what OP did. To recap, my wife told me that she wanted an open marriage. I didn't but agreed when she told me she was prepared to file for divorce. She had an outside partner within 24 hours. It took me a few months. Her partner and her broke up. She stalked me and introduced herself to my partner to try to force me to end it. When that didn't work, she decided to demand that the marriage be closed again. I put conditions on it that she wasn't willing to accept. Now on to the last month. It's been a very tough month. I confronted my wife about the stalking. She denied it at first and then I brought up her location history. She attempted to deflect claiming I invaded her privacy, but I didn't take the bait. Finally, she admitted that she didn't like that I had someone on the side when she didn't and a mom at the school felt too close to home. I agreed that I would end things with Amber if she would agree to counseling, close up the marriage permanently and start looking for a job to help with household expenses. She replied that she's a stay at home mom I told her it was something we could revisit after the lockdown was over, but when things normalize, she can't just stay home. We did a few therapy sessions and things went well at first. The therapist challenged her on why she had followed me, asked why she felt she had to go outside the marriage and had her address pretty much everything going through my mind. Then things went south. She admitted her outside partner was someone from her past, a high school boyfriend. They'd broken up before anything happened and had reconnected. She regretted not going all the way with him in high school and decided that she wanted to fulfill that desire. I was angry. I told her that if me choosing a mom from school was too close to home, then her choosing a married ex-boyfriend was completely unacceptable. I told her I didn't even want to look at her. I checked into a hotel to go cool off because I didn't want my kids to see me like that. I stayed there for a few days and then decided to go home and deal with what was left of my marriage. When I got home, I found that my daughter was being unusually cold to me. Even for a 14 year old girl, she was very dismissive. When I asked her what was going on, she went off on me for cheating on mom with a band mom. I asked her where she heard this. She wouldn't tell me at first, telling me it didn't matter, but then finally admitted her mother told her I was staying at my girlfriend's house after I left. I counted to 10 in my head, told her it wasn't true, showed her the receipt on my phone for the hotel and told her that her mother and I had a fight and I decided to take some time away so we could both calm down. She cried a lot 
and I promised her that I loved her and I'd always love her. I did my best to remain calm, though I was burning up inside. I didn't even go to my wife. I went on Facebook and found the guy's wife. I sent her a message letting her know that for a year and a half her husband had been having an affair with my wife and I'd be happy to send her any proof she'd like. She was very appreciative and had suspected something was up. A few hours later, my wife came to me in a rage, screaming that I violated the confidentiality of our therapy and ruined the guy's life. I asked her what she meant to do by telling our daughter that I had a girlfriend. She denied doing it and still refuses to admit that she told her anything other than I was away for a few days. This went down last Thursday. We haven't spoken to each other since. We're supposed to have another counseling session tomorrow, though I don't know if it's even worth going. I keep catching her in lies and I don't think I'll ever be able to trust her again. I know that filing for divorce is the wise choice at this point, but I feel sick thinking about it. I feel like a failure because I couldn't make my marriage work. I know that's where it's going to end up, but I just feel like I'm going to throw up every time I try to call an attorney. Well OP, first things first. Your marriage failing is not at all your fault. It is absolutely your wife's fault. I'm sorry, but this is all her doing. You were happily married in a monogamous relationship without even thinking about opening up your marriage until your wife decided she wanted to sleep with a high school boyfriend that she never got to do. She was so willing to go to bed with this guy that she threatened divorce if she wasn't allowed to do it. Then, when her relationship had to end, she just couldn't stand that you still had a side thing, right? So she created a situation that would have to force you to end things with Amber. And to top all of that off, she did parental alienation. She tried to ruin your relationship with your daughter. Your wife is a hypocrite and a manipulator. And I know I say this a lot, but she sucks. Like you say, maybe divorce is the only way to go. Or maybe your wife needs a lot of therapy because she's mental. And if she wants to keep her marriage alive, then she's going to have to do something to win your trust back. What do you guys think OP should do at this point? Okay, now on that note, let's move on to the next story. So if your spouse cheats on you with a married person and you find the other betrayed spouse and you tell them, are you a homewrecker? Well, that's what happened to our next OP. This one's from user Throaray Homewrecker. My 29 female ex-husband's 32 male affair partner 31 female is accusing me of being a homewrecker. D-Day was about one and a half years ago. I, 29 female, found out my now ex-husband 32 male was having an affair because he got his affair partner 31 female pregnant and he was leaving me to be with her and his baby. Her being pregnant was especially painful because we had been trying to get pregnant for a whole year without any success. I made every mistake you could possibly make when finding out about an affair. I did the pick me dance but in overdrive. My ex left for two weeks before coming back to try to make things work. The trickle truth started then. He claimed she had lied about the baby and he was no longer speaking to her. He also claimed that they hadn't had an affair. He called it that when he first confessed. But it had been a drunk one night stand. He claimed he never wanted to leave but felt like he had to be with her for his child and that he never wanted her and would never have touched her had he been sober. I didn't question him much because I was just so relieved he was back. I didn't know who the affair partner was at this point and whenever I asked him who it was, he kept insisting it didn't matter. D-Day 2 was two months later. My ex treated me like crap during reconciliation. He was acting like I did something wrong by not being able to get pregnant and that his cheating never happened. Before D-Day 1, I never had any inclination that my ex was cheating on me. However, during our Falls reconciliation, there were more typical cheater signs. So, I ended up snooping through his phone whilst he was sleeping, and it was devastating. 
I found out that they had never stopped seeing each other, that he only came back because she had terminated the pregnancy, at my ex's insistence. Because her husband would have found out she was having an affair, he was abroad during the time of conception, and that my ex convinced the affair partner to wait to leave her husband until he could get her the house she deserved. I found out that their affair had been going on for at least 8 months and that he had been buying her designer bags and other expensive gifts whilst we could barely afford the rent. I was paying almost all the bills at this point because he told me he was paying for his mom's medical bills. I'd like to think I reacted better after D-Day 2. I didn't confront my ex, instead I borrowed some money from my sister so I could hire a lawyer and serve him divorce papers. I did get screenshots of the messages and I started trying to find the affair partner's husband so I could give him a heads up. I ended up finding her on Facebook and honestly, I don't know why she would throw her life away for someone like my ex. I had to actually double check to make sure it was her because I just couldn't understand why someone would risk such a comfortable life to live with someone who barely scrapes by. Maybe that's shallow, but as someone who has had to struggle because of how terrible my ex's spending habits are, I just couldn't comprehend it. I still hadn't found a way to contact the affair partner's husband when I finally served my ex with the papers and moved in with my sister. Thankfully, my name was not on the lease so I wasn't stuck living with him. At first, he begged for a second chance and refused to sign them. In the end, I made it clear I knew who his affair partner was and that I was going to tell her husband about their affair if he didn't sign the papers. He ended up signing them if I promised not to tell his affair partner's husband because he didn't want me to hurt him. I couldn't contact the affair partner's husband even if I wanted to, so I agreed. My divorce was finalized quickly because we didn't have much to split. My ex continued to see his affair partner and I even met her once when I went to pick up the last of my stuff. That really made me angry because I felt like she was getting her happily ever after with both guys whilst my life had just been shattered and I was forced to live in my sister's spare bedroom. My sister ended up finding her husband through LinkedIn of all places. I messaged him my number and asked him to call me because I had something to tell him about his wife. After two weeks, he finally called me. At first, he didn't believe me but I emailed him the evidence I had. We stayed in contact whilst he tried to find his own evidence and hired a PI to confirm the affair was still ongoing. The affair partner and her husband separated and he moved out. He ended up finding some more information out and he invited me over so he could show it to me and thank me in person. Most of it is irrelevant to this post but I finally found out why my ex wanted his affair partner to terminate the pregnancy after so valiantly leaving her for me. They wanted to trap her husband into paying child support for their kid. Anyway, we got drunk and were talking about how screwed up the affair partner and my ex are and one thing led to another. We didn't keep in touch after that but I know from my ex who sent me a bunch of abusive texts that the affair partner and her husband got back together and she dumped him. Two months ago, I found out I was pregnant. The only person I've slept with is the other betrayed spouse. It took me a long time to decide what I was going to do about it, but three weeks ago, I sent him a text asking if we could meet up because I had something to tell him. The affair partner ended up calling me to scream at me and tell me to leave her husband alone and not to contact him again. I ended up calling him to tell him about the pregnancy and my plans to keep the baby. He was surprised about the baby but said he wanted to be involved. I'm assuming he told his ex wife because she's been pestering me since to terminate my pregnancy. She even offered to pay for it. She's called me a few nasty names including a homewrecker and said her husband was leaving her because of me. 
She even got back in contact with my ex and he keeps sending me messages about how he's so hurt I would have another man's baby when I refused to have his and that this is why our marriage ended. The affair partner has even sent me a few of her and my ex's intimate tapes, which is gross. This situation is incredibly messy, but I just found it ironic that I am now the homewrecker according to the affair partner. Well OP, like you say, this situation is incredibly messy, but the two people that suck the most in this whole thing are of course your husband and his affair partner. Really, their plan was to baby trap her husband into paying child support for their kid? That's just gross. If I were you, I would just block your ex and his affair partner everywhere, cause you don't really need them in your life. Hopefully you and your baby's father can do some proper co-parenting, in case you don't end up together, which would be really weird anyways. So all the best to you and your baby. And so we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and click like. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, here are more videos from my channel that you might enjoy. And having said all that, I will see you guys on the next video.